Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is still Friday, December 17th, 2021. I'm Andrew Hansen, back in the studio with Josh Crash Davis. We just finished the main slate pod for week 15, and now we've got the primetime pod. We're going with the originally scheduled primetime games on Sunday and Monday night, Tampa and the Saints, and then we're going to hit uh, the Bears and Vikings for Monday night. We're not going to cover the other uh, primetime games, we'll call them, this week with all the moving parts and COVID. We will have lineups, though, for our members for all those games. Full lineups on FanDuel and Yahoo, Cash and GPP, Coach's Clipboard or The Core on DraftKings for Cash and GPP. So jump in, DFSCoachDoc.com for lineups for those games and for these and for the main slate. We're going to have a busy weekend, Josh. Yeah, starting tomorrow already, so got to be ready. That's right. All right, so let's get ready for the the biggest primetime games of the weekend, the, the ones with the biggest contests on DraftKings and FanDuel, starting with the Saints and Buccaneers, Sunday night, 8.20 Eastern. Bucks are big favorites here, 11.5 at home, total 45.5. Uh, when these two teams played before Josh, the Saints won that one, but a little different scenario as Jameis Winston started, mm-hmm. got hurt, Simeon played, but it's Taysom Hill this time around. Right. Yep. Much, much different scenario here. So, and now you've got Sean Payton's out with COVID. We've got the two starting tackles for the Saints are out with Ryan Ramsick and Teron Armstead are both out. So it, it could be a long day for the Saints. Yeah, I, I, I feel you there. Uh, I think the line makes sense. Uh, but as we put some lineups together, you know, any little glimmers of hope uh, on that side of the ball? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Alvin Kamara, he did all right in their first matchup. He had 19 carries for 61 yards, which is not a great average there, but he did get a touchdown. That's the main key there. Um, You know, Tampa has allowed the fifth fewest fantasy points to running back, so it's going to be tough sledding for the Saints running game. Um, You know, and and with um, with the injuries and everything on the offensive line on top of it, it's just going to be that much tougher. But I, I do think that, if um, speaking of those injuries, if, if Tampa really focuses taking advantage of those tackles with the pass rush, you could see Kamara used a little bit in the short passing game and the screen game and stuff like that to help slow down the pass rush. So I do think that he's in play there. Um, you know, you have to play somebody from the Saints. So he would probably be the top option for me. Uh, Mark Ingram is not in play for me. Um, just more of a power running back that does not suit him well in this matchup at all. Um, just run right into guys like Vita Vea and Indomitian Sue. And it's going to be a long day for him. Um, and then um, Taysom Hill, you know, he's had quite a bit of success lately against the Jets in Dallas, but this is obviously a much better defense against the run. Although we did see Josh Allen um, last week, he had 12 carries for 109 yards and a touchdown. On the flip side of that, the the Bills have a lot more weapons than the Saints, so I think that the Saints, the the Bucks defense could just focus in um, on Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara, and and it could be a long day. So, yeah, I, I agree. Great points there. Um, also, not on Ingram and Kamara. It's probably only going to work if he catches a bunch of balls mm-hmm. because they are so stout against the run. Uh, and then, in, in addition to Allen who also threw for 300 yards. He had the rare 300-100 combo. Uh, Jalen Hurts also had two rushing touchdowns against the Buccaneers. So these these mobile quarterbacks can have success. Uh, It's a bit of a different wrinkle for the Buccaneers to have to deal with. So Kamara and and Hill are my favorite options as well. Um, We'll see how the lineups work out on each site. If you go the cheap captain, you could play both of them on DraftKings. Uh, if you go with a, a mid-tier or an expensive one, you probably have to pick one because mm-hmm. uh, I will probably load up more on the on the Tampa Bay side. Right. Um, but how about any of the pass catchers? I mean, it is a wild group um, with yeah. you know low volume, um, not much reliability, mm-hmm. upside. Upside is really not that great either. Yeah. Um, but anyone that's on your radar? No, not for me. I mean, you got Traquan Smith would probably be the highest upside, and and even he has only had like, I don't know, six, seven, eight 
DraftKings points lately, so it's just not a lot there. He's getting like three targets a game. Um, just not a lot for me. Yeah, that's the magic number for him. Last mm-hmm. week, three for 33 on three targets. And how about this? When they played before, three catches, 33 yards on three targets. Mm-hmm. So there's some nice symmetry there, but if he doesn't get in the end zone, you know, the six DraftKings points, not what we want. I do think he's got the best matchup uh, running mostly in the slot. So uh, he's uh, he's playable for me. Uh, we've got some question marks there too with little Jordan Humphrey, questionable with the hamstring. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got Callaway. You've got Stills who was out there some last week but didn't get any, any action. Um, Deontay Harris still out, by the way. Yeah. And then Vanette had three catches on six targets. So there's a, a punt play option if if you really want to load up on the Buccaneers and go with a cheap mm-hmm. uh, a cheap member of the Saints. But uh yeah, I agree. It's probably gonna be a heavy Buccaneers lineup. Shall we transition to that side of it? Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot, not a lot here for the Saints, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So. All right. So on that Tampa side, you look back and I mean, that's the key here is that they lost that game in New Orleans, but it was a different group of players. Um, the the kind of the lasting image of it is the pick six for Brady at the end mm-hmm. to kind of finish it off, which is funny because if you look at the numbers, that performance by Brady in that loss uh, was the most fantasy points that the Saints have allowed to any quarterback this year. Hmm. Because he threw for 375 and four scores, he did have the two picks. Yeah. But the game plan for the Buccaneers was clearly throw it early and often, avoid the tough rush defense of the Saints. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the real storyline for me in this game. Both defenses are real strong against the run. Right. Uh, and the Buccaneers, they showed in that game, let's play to our strength, which is passing it. And we, yeah, we want to be able to run it, but this is just not a good week for it. So we're not going to do it. Fournette mm-hmm. had eight carries in that game for 26 yards. Ronald Jones only had three carries for 13. Gio Bernard had two for 30. So they just put it in Brady's hands. He threw it 40 times, put up a ton of yards, uh, and they just they came up short. But I think they're going to do the same thing. I think they're going to go mostly to the pass. So I want to have Brady out there. Uh, Godwin was heavily targeted in that game, uh, you know, did the best of the pass catchers and he's been a, a monster lately with mm-hmm. AB out. Yeah. So I, I think they continue along that path. I like the Brady to Godwin combo again here. Evans, not as high on with the, the tough matchup. He's going to face a lot more Lattimore. Wow. Uh, and, and Brady only targeted him four times in that matchup back in week eight. Right. So uh, that's the primary focus there. If you want to save a little, you could look at Tyler Johnson getting a little bit more involved. He had three catches last week, and he actually had five catches in this matchup earlier. So he's a a cheap option. Uh, Brashad Perriman had the the home run play that Mm -hmm. we've been talking about for a few weeks, uh, the walk-off against Buffalo. Uh, But that was his – what he had, what, two targets in that game. So – um, you know, he's still not getting a ton of targets. Gronk is a little bit expensive on DraftKings at 78. He's been really strong these last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Saints are strong on paper, you know, with the numbers here. It's a bottom 10 matchup for tight ends, but they haven't played Kelsey or Waller or Andrews. So I think Gronk can get it done. It's just, you know, does he get into the end zone? Because that that price is a little a little stiff, yeah. Uh, and then I, I really don't plan to play the running backs. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Jones just doesn't get enough touches. Fournette is pricey. I, I really only only think he's going to do it if he if he does it through the air. Yeah, and he has been getting more catches lately. And yep. with Bernard out, um, you know that solidifies it even more. Uh, but you know, he's he's not my focus this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Did Gronk play in the first game? I can't remember. He got hurt, uh, so he, he got, oh, I think, yeah. one target. 
uh, and then left. So that one is kind of hard to evaluate. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Anything different for you on, on Tampa? No, I think I would fall along the same lines. Um, you know, like you said, Godwin's been heavily targeted, been very productive. Um, Evans, you know, he's been performing well too, but he just really struggled traditionally against Lattimore. He's kind of had his number. So, um, yeah, I think that's 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 the way to attack this uh, Saints defense. As you mentioned, very tough against the run. I believe they've allowed the fewest um, fantasy points to running backs. So That's right, number one. Yep. Yep. All right, great. Well, uh, let's transition to game two. Appreciate everybody's support here. If you hit that thumbs up, we'd really appreciate it on YouTube. And we'll continue to bring these primetime podcasts to you. Check out the Main Slate pod if you haven't already. Uh, and let's hit up the Monday night game, the late game now, all of a sudden, at 8.15 Eastern. Uh, we've got the Vikings and Bears. First time these teams are matching up. They're going to play again in week 18 this year. Uh, Minnesota favored by six in this one, total of 44. And I'll get us started on the Minnesota side here. The news from that camp is that Adam Thielen is doubtful, dealing with the ankle issue. Alexander Madison now on the COVID list. So a little bit tighter core here. Uh, and I really think it's big news if, if Thielen is out. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I want to start with this passing game. And remember what happened against uh, Pittsburgh last time out. By the way, that was a Thursday game. So they, you know Minnesota has a little bit of extra rest, which I like. Uh, and, of course, the big story was Dalvin Cook, who just went nuts. Um, you know, the Pittsburgh rush defense just in shambles. And he just blasted through. Uh, that second level time after time, 205 yards rushing. Hmm. So he was awesome. But the, one of the numbers that stood out to me was the, the concentration of targets with those two lead receivers, Justin Jefferson and KJ Osborne. With Thielen out, they had 24 targets between them out of Kirk, Kirk Cousins' 31 pass attempts. Hmm. So we're talking over 75% of the targets and uh, the Bears have given up the fifth most fantasy points to wide receivers. Mm. So we don't have the pricing yet for this slate. It's Friday night. But I'm looking at building uh, possibly a GPP lineup where I stack Cousins with Jefferson and Osborne and probably fade Cook in, in yeah. that lineup. I'm not going to fade him for the whole slate, of course. Mm -hmm. But... I just wanted to make the point that uh, I think that's pretty noteworthy, those numbers. Um, and it's such a small group of guys who get targeted on that team, sort of like the Rams in recent years. Right. Because um, we talk all the time about how they just they ride the, the, the bell cow running back. Mm -hmm. You know, Cook, when he's healthy, if it's Madison, it's basically Madison all day. And so they yeah. kind of do that with the, the pass catchers too. Right. Yeah, I mean, we we saw it Sunday night too with with Green Bay with Devontae Adams and Alan Lazard. You know, they had the pretty pretty big games for Green Bay, and um, the running game struggled a little bit. So I could definitely see that. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I wanted to make that point as well. And the matchups on PFF uh, really strong. Jefferson ninety eight point one, Osborne eighty five point nine. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have you know, a strong, a strong uh, optimism that those guys will be effective again. And the, you know, the green Bay guys, I guess it was more of a passing game in terms of the touchdowns, but Dylan and Jones did combine for 20 carries for one Oh six. So over five yards per carry while they're running it. So I feel pretty solid about cook again, especially with Madison likely out there. Mm -hmm. They don't have much depth there. They've got Nwangwu. And they just signed Wayne Gallman. So uh, those are the guys who might fight for one or two carries each. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, tight end group, we've got Conklin. A couple catches last week. Uh, Herndon had one. And your your boys, you know, were pretty solid. Lewis and Aguara, 70, 7 for 95. 
Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a possibility. Uh, again, we'll see what the pricing is like, but I'm I'm pretty interested in this uh, Minnesota side. Uh, and uh, curious to see your thoughts there and your thoughts on Chicago. Yeah, I, I definitely like Justin Jefferson in this game. He would be my top play probably on the whole on the whole game. Um, and and you know, obviously, if if he's going to be a top player, then Cousins is going to have to be the one on the other side of that. And then, um, you know, KJ Osborne has, has shown some potential throughout the whole year off and on. It just looks like he just needs more opportunities. So if he gets those opportunities, if Thielen's out, definitely could see Osborne having a big game, especially if the Bears decided to focus more on Jefferson. So, yeah, by the way, Osborne, he had the nine targets last week, only three catches, but he had that big one ended with 83 yards and a touchdown. So I, I agree. He's getting the opportunities. We'll see if he's a little more efficient and they can connect on those a little bit more. But if he gets nine targets again, uh, I like his chances to, to pay off. For sure. All right, well, tell us about this bear side. Um, so Justin Fields, you know, he was, he was pretty solid um, against Green Bay. He had 21 DraftKings points in that game. Got a lot done on the ground, too. Uh, but in his last three starts, he's got 21, 19, and 29 DraftKings points. So it seems like things are starting to slow down for him a little bit. Um, Minnesota has allowed the fourth most fantasy points to quarterbacks. You know, last week, Roethlisberger had 308 Nine, with three touchdowns against them. The week before that, Goff had 296 with three touchdowns. So they've definitely had some success recently against the Vikings. Um, quarterbacks have. And, um, you know, with Allen Robinson on the COVID list, I'm looking at Darnell Mooney as the clear top option at wide receiver for them. Um, they've been susceptible to the deep ball this year, and Mooney's been the, the big play big play threat for Chicago. Um, he, had a, he had a down game last game against the Packers uh, with only one catch for uh, on five targets. Um, but this is a much more favorable matchup for him. Minnesota has allowed the most fantasy points to wide receivers. So definitely like Darnell Mooney. Um, Jakeem Grant, I mean, what a first half he had in, in Green Bay on Sunday night. Um, the 97-yard punt return and a 46-yard touchdown, that little push pass that he had. So definitely um, in play for me. He'll probably be a little bit more popular and maybe over-owned after what happened. Uh, and, and the Vikings are better against punt returns. They, they are sixth best in the NFL with only 6.6 .6 yards per punt return, whereas Green Bay was last in the NFL. So um, that's, that's definitely an option for me with Grant. And then for a GPP sleeper, you could look at a guy like Demir Bird. Um, he only had two catches, but he made the most of them. He took one to a 54-yard touchdown over the middle after that pick six that Fields had thrown and kind of swung the momentum back in Chicago's way a little bit. And so he's in play for me as a GPP sleeper. And uh, Minnesota has allowed the fifth most fantasy points to kickers. So I like Cairo Santos a little bit. I know we don't usually look at kickers too much, but um, Santos is in play for me too. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I want to follow up on Fields because you mentioned the recent quarterback performances against the Vikings and earlier in the season, they faced a couple of mobile quarterbacks who did quite well. Yeah. Lamar Jackson, 266 and three through the air, and he ran for 120. Hmm. And then Kyler Murray threw for 403 scores and 31 yards on the ground and another score. So, like you said, things are slowing down for Fields in terms of it's getting easier, right, for him to process everything. Right. Yeah, His fantasy points are, are speeding up. Mm-hmm. So I do like him as well in this game. And you got to figure Mooney will bounce back and be more efficient in that strong matchup. Uh, well, again, we'll see what the pricing is is like uh, and how much Grant gets priced up for that performance. Uh, tight ends here, I, I did want to mention Cole Komet got five targets again. And this is another bottom 10 matchup, but... Uh, the Vikings have given up four touchdowns in the last four weeks or last four games to tight ends. Mm. And then um, any interest in the running backs here? Um, you know, Montgomery didn't do much on the ground. Uh, he did catch six balls last week, but kind of an average matchup, right? And if we go, right. if we go with Fields and Jefferson or Cousins or Cook, probably be tough to afford Montgomery. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be. Um, although in a GPP, I would definitely consider Montgomery in play. He just, you know, even if he doesn't get a lot of rushing yards, he can still get those touchdowns, which is the big key. So, yeah, it can really swing things on a on a showdown slate, yeah. can it? Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, there is the key primetime analysis for Sunday night and Monday night. Going to be a wild weekend. So hop on with us if you want the lineups for all the other showdown games as well in primetime. Uh, Going to be a lot of fun. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, on behalf of Josh Crash Davis and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. We'll see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS.